Okay, so I guess this would be part three in my little mini series on doing over your drip rails or fixing rust issues by layers. So, um, I did the A pillar, this section under here I did. Then I did the bracing that goes from your roof panel to your door mount. So that's all new. This section here was cut out. It's new. Um, then I am now doing the actual trim piece for the uh, drip rail. So what I initially did, because this piece here was cut too long, so I had to cut it down so it matches the trim line of the OEM. That's one. So here's going to be butt welded, all here, going down, and then everything else is going to be spot welded. Now the thing to note or to keep in mind is that obviously you want to make sure everything still mounts afterwards. So you can do it one of two ways. One is that you can use your OEM trim, pop it on the drip rail with this still semi like tacked in just to make sure everything fits up too you can measure now when you measure you wanna measure off of some point of reference that is not gonna change once you start cutting seems like common sense but you know I can't assume anything so what I did was I put a little piece of tape here and then measured 12 inches from that tape edge, that leading edge, what I'll call the leading edge, to the end of this suction piece. Um, I then did that for the point of reference for the length, but that only satisfies one plane, which is essentially, you know, going in and out. Now we have to worry about going this way. So to, accomp to satisfy that, what I did was I looked at the edge of uh, here and I couldn't read a measurement because here was all rusty before I fixed it. So I took a ruler and measured the good side and I'm using the same reference. Um, I, I like to use a machinist ruler which I can't find at the moment, but I measured here. This gap is, needs to be 13 millimeters from my ruler. The inches was just a little harder to read from my ruler. So that's that. And then also, obviously, you just want to line here up for this top edge. So here I'm not worried about. Down here is where you got to worry. So first, you take your measurement. My measurement I got exactly 12 and that's how I cut the new piece that I got because you got the whole thing. But the problem with the whole thing is that if you want to replace this whole drip rail you have to remove the roof because the drip rail goes underneath the roof. It's sandwiched in between the flange for the roof and for the inner structure. It's in the middle of that. so. That's just that's just a lot of work. So just do it this way. I've done the other side already. The trim goes on, um, and everything is nice. So I'm going to tack weld this in place. You can weld over the coat. So I'm going to tack this in place. Once I tack it, I'm going to actually put on my OEM drip rail. Make sure everything is perfect. Then, once I feel confident, I'll weld all of my spot welds, weld all everything, and then that will be good to go. I've already done the same thing to the B pillar trip rail. It's just metal. It's, it's uh, sanded metal, so that's why it looks that way. But it's all installed, good to go. And uh, it, I mounted the trip rail for here as well, chopped this section. And then afterwards, lead filled my joint in, and then um, lead filled here as well. 
because I have to cut out. So some of the tools needed. What are the tools necessary to do this job? Okay, so um, you need to be able to get down the metal. So you need some kind of grinder. So what I like to use is um, this grinder. It's an angle grinder with a electric because you're doing a lot and having you compress and continuously run is just annoying. So good flap disc set. Uh, I like flap disc. They get welds down real quick. You gotta just be careful with them because they will take off a little bit more metal than you might think. So for when I'm down to doing my finishing to get the surface smooth like that, I then switch to my air tools and use my air grinder with a 28 disc. I like to use the the um, three inch and then when I get to finer areas I might go to a two inch uh, so you know that's that but you still gotta worry about tight corners like here it has a lot of tight radiuses so to get into there you can use this tool this tool will get into those corners you can slowly and, and carefully Grind the well down to where you need to because none of those tools really get in those corners like that. So this tool is is definitely handy to have for that. It can be do it can you can use this for more than just cutting the metal, which obviously is the purpose, like the initial purpose. Otherwise, um, one thing that I don't see spoken about a lot is coatings. Um, for the inner frame structure, a good coating to use where you're not welding is Eastwood's or any um, rust converter slash encapsulator. This will take the rust from this into that. And I put this stuff all on the inner structure of the car just because it'll protect it and you know make it last longer than uh, than you know if you left it alone so that is that the next product on the agenda is going to be weld through primer this is quite critical for where you're going to have any kind of overlapping joints this will allow you to weld to the surface without any you know worry about a weld failure due to some kind of coating being on top so this allows you to weld to it I like theirs theirs is good I you know I'm a little bit more of a fan of the zinc copper one because it seems to penetrate the weld better but it's good it's a good product it's not like it you know it's going to waste I bought a few of them so I endorse the product for as much as that's worth um, another product you can get for rust is Duplicolor's Rust Fix. Now this product is a slightly different than the rust encapsulator. The Rust Fix, it will convert any area that's rusty into a black oxide, but does not actually create a coating on the whole surface. So this can is a little misleading, making it look from that to black. It is not the same thing okay so uh, that is where you know you take off accordingly you follow the manufacturers you know, guidelines as to obeying the dry times the rust the rust encapsulator before you can do anything else but any other surface tape off whatever you have to wait three hours so be wary of that um, the weld through primer has a five minute flash time and then a 20 minute dry time before you can actually weld to it. So two good coats, that's 10 minutes and then another 20, another 15 to 20 minutes to let it dry. So make sure you put that into your time frame. So otherwise, we're almost good to go. Um, oh, one other thing I should mention is to get this part working from that 
to you know that I sandblasted it with that so um, that is all I got for now I'm going to weld this up well I'm gonna do a couple more measurements tack this in put on my trim piece make sure everything is lined up and good to go and then I will be off to the races to continue on. Till next time.